More than 1,000 bottles of baby oil. Yeah, you heard that right. Over 1,000 bottles. Breaking news now. The indictment against Sean Diddy Combs has just been unsealed. Combs is being charged with rap hearing conspiracy, alleging he ran an enterprise that he engaged in forced labor or kidnapping, arson, and other crimes. He's also charged uh, with trafficking by force. I speak to him all the time. What's his reaction to everything this happened? We, we knew this was coming. I mean, he, he moved to New York, uh, as I think some of you guys know. We, we brought him to New York about two weeks ago because we knew this day was going to come, and it's here. Sean Carter is worse. Uh-oh. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Y'all, the day we've been waiting for for almost an entire year has finally arrived. Diddy has been arrested and officially charged. And listen, I know you think you've heard all the dirt there is on Diddy's twisted antics, but trust me, once you hear the sickening details from this indictment, you are going to be absolutely sick to your stomach. But what's even more outrageous, Diddy's shameless lawyers are still out here doubling down, claiming he's an innocent man, being unfairly targeted by these accusations. As if we didn't all see that footage of Diddy caught in 4K putting his hands on Cassie. And that's not all. Reports are circulating that Diddy is getting ready to full on snitch and drag his celebrity friends down with him. And you already know people are saying Jay Z is the first one on the list. So buckle up because we are diving deep into this mess. And trust me, it's worse than anyone imagined. Let's get into it. Um, I spent I spent the, the evening with him. I was with him till about one o'clock. His spirits are good. He's confident. Um, he is dealing with this head on the way he's dealt with every challenge in his life and um, he's, he's not guilty. He's innocent of these charges. It's official, y'all. Sean Diddy Combs has finally been arrested after a flood of lawsuits accusing him of SA, DV, and so much more. On Monday, September 16th, almost exactly a year after his ex Cassie dropped her bombshell lawsuit and got the ball rolling, Diddy was taken into custody at the Park Hyatt Hotel on West 57th Street, where he had moved a few weeks ago to wait for his arrest. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams has confirmed to NBC News that on the night of September 16th, federal agents arrested Diddy based on a sealed indictment from the Southern District of New York. But guess what? That indictment has just been unsealed. And let me tell you, the details are beyond sickening. So here's what the indictment read. The United States of America versus Sean Diddy Combs says, it starts off with count one rec conspiracy and describes how for decades Diddy abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. And to do so, they're saying Diddy relied on the employees, resources, and influence of the multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled. The indictment goes on to describe this business empire as a criminal enterprise whose members engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, ex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The document then describes Diddy's persistent and pervasive pattern of mistreating women and it claims that this mistreatment was at times verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual. According to the indictment, Diddy manipulated women to participate in highly orchestrated performances of ex activity with men, commercial ex workers. And as we know from Cassie's lawsuit, Diddy would refer to these performances as freak offs. Diddy is also being accused of making arrangements for women and ex workers to fly to his location. And the indictment claims that the way Diddy would ensure these women did what he told them to was by supplying them with substances, controlling their careers, leveraging his financial support, and to cut off all the same, but also by using intimidation and violence. The indictment further argues that Diddy's physical mistreatment of women was recurrent and widely known. It then goes on to describe that incident we saw on the hotel surveillance footage where Diddy was seen striking, dragging, and kicking Cassie and also throwing objects at her. The surveillance footage that was captured inside of a Los Angeles hotel in 2016 allegedly shows Combs assaulting then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hallway. A now settled lawsuit filed by Ventura claimed that she was trying to leave the hotel after a drunken Combs punched her. The video appears to show Combs chasing her down the hall, throwing her to the ground 
and then repeatedly kicking her. The indictment also alleges that Diddy's physical aggression wasn't limited to the women he dated, but that it also extended to his employees, witnesses, and others. As for the racketeering charge, the indictment argues that Diddy used his various businesses and employees to carry out, facilitate, and cover up his and commercial ex. The indictment claims that from at least in or about 2008, Diddy and his accomplices, known and unknown, were members of a criminal organization, the Combs Enterprise, or The Enterprise. And they engaged in, get this, among other crimes, ex-trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion, and enticement to engage in prostitution, illegal substance offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. According to the indictment, members of Diddy's criminal enterprise functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the Combs enterprise. And the grand jury argues in the indictment that the enterprise, with Diddy as its leader, affected both interstate and foreign commerce. The indictment then goes on to describe means and methods that the Combs enterprise used to fulfill Diddy's twisted orders. This included intimidating, and luring women victims into Combs' orbit, often under the pretense of a romantic relationship. Then, according to the indictment, Diddy would proceed to use force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended S-acts with men commercial ex-workers, also known as freak-offs. The freak-offs are described in the indictment as elaborate and produced ex-performances that Diddy arranged, directed, pleasured himself during, and often electronically recorded. Diddy is also accused of arranging for ex-workers to be transported across state lines and internationally for the purposes of his freak-off sessions. According to the indictment, these freak-offs would occur regularly and sometimes lasted multiple days and involved multiple commercial ex-workers. And during freak-offs, the indictment alleges that Diddy distributed a variety of controlled substances to victims, in part to keep the victims obedient and compliant. And without the victim's consent, Diddy would keep videos he filmed of the freak-offs. Once the session was over, the indictment claims that Diddy and his victims typically received IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion and substance use. And let me remind you that Diddy would often talk about using IV fluids supposedly to recover from a night of regular partying. And if you remember a few years back, he even showed up on the Ellen show late because he had to get an IV session backstage. Boy, oh boy, Ellen, I love you. I, I know you didn't ask where I've just come from, but I just got off a plane I'm on tour, I just did five nights in a row. Um, I walked in with an IV. I know, I walked back there and okay. he's literally holding an IV. You just took that out yourself? Yeah, let me, let me get to the story real quick. <laughs> I know it's just showing everything, but I walked out with an IV and um, they said, thank you, thank you, thank you. They, they said that I would have to stay. I said, no, I have to go. I said, I could pull that out myself. So I walk in and I'm talking to Ellen, I have the IV and then the blood is going down. I start to panic. I go into the bathroom and I pulled it out myself and I just made it here and I love you. I love you too. You didn't have time to tie your shoes. Time to tie my shoes. Your people are incredible in the back. They're like, you'll be all right, but you have to go on stage right now. So I'm here. And I usually come color coordinated. So that was all to explain why I had a blue bandage on like that. You, and I wasn't color coordinated. You look fantastic. You look really great. And um, I want to, first of all, can we talk about, you went to Beyonce's birthday party. Yes. Which I'm very jealous of. I don't know her, so I shouldn't have been invited. But um, but let's show a picture of you at, was it like a 70s themed birthday party? Or was that just a look that you decided to go with that night? Um, It was a 70s themed Soul Train party. But this is me once. Um, every first week of the month on a Friday night. That That's my theme, you know, in life you have to keep things fresh, so. Yeah, what are you holding there? I'm holding my package. Because <laughs> you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody's gotta do it. So, um, so. Hey. That's... I just lost a lot of blood back uh, there. <laughs> you did. I um, did. <laughs> wait, do you want water or do you want a beverage? I have a glass for you too. Ooh, I need one this is the this is the tequila that you gave me with my name on it.
Yes. Yeah. This is Deleon Tequila. This is the next level. I think I need a shot right now to Here. shake everything up. Come on, you're strong. You can do that. You have to drink responsibly, so, you know, I'm a responsible person. You can't just be able to rip these caps off in the store and take a, a swig. That's what they mean by drink responsibly? <laughs> You can't rip the cap off in the store. Yeah. I think it's that you, you can know, tell that I'm a respo right. responsible. Well, you're you're being driven. I know that, so oh. that's fine. Yes. I don't have any ice. Do you want ice? No, I don't need ice. Okay. All right. Here's to here's to you guys. Here's. So so no money on you. I mean, it's just a little bit of money on me. I mean. Oh, you do have money on you. <laughs> Lord I'm have saying, mercy. Not... Where are you going after this? It's all 20s. Where are you going after this? What are you doing? You know what I, you know we doing what we uh, plan to do, girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's get back to that indictment. So it goes on to claim that Diddy's employees facilitated the freak-offs by booking hotel rooms, stocking the rooms in advance with freak-off supplies, including controlled substances, baby oil, lubricants, extra linens, and lighting. Diddy's employees would also reportedly clean the hotel rooms after the freak-off sessions and try to mitigate room damage. But that's not all. Diddy would also instruct his staff to arrange for travel for victims and commercial ex-workers to and from freak-offs, resupply Diddy with requested supplies, deliver large sums of cash to Diddy to pay the commercial ex-workers, and schedule the delivery of IV fluids. And get this, according to the indictment, when Homeland Security raided Diddy's properties back in March, they seized various freak-off supplies, including illegal substances and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Yeah, you heard that right, over 1,000 bottles. The indictment claims that Diddy subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal mistreatment to cause them to engage in freak-off, and he maintained control of the victims through different means, including threats of physical harm. According to the indictment, Diddy would also track the victims' whereabouts, dictate their physical appearance, monitor their medical records, control their hosting, and supply them with controlled substances. During the freak-off sessions, Diddy is accused of using physical force that included hitting, kicking, throwing objects at, and dragging victims by their hair. And the indictment claims that after the freak-offs, victims would be left with injuries that took days or weeks to heal. The indictment further claims that members of the Combs Enterprise carried firearms, and on more than one occasion, Diddy himself carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and others, including his victims and witnesses. And during those raids back in March, the feds reportedly confiscated three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers, as well as a drum magazine. According to the indictment, various employees witnessed Diddy using physical force against his victims, but they never intervened. Instead, they concealed his crimes and even assisted Diddy in locating and contacting victims who attempted to flee. Diddy and his accomplices are being accused of using various means to intimidate victims and prevent them from alerting the authorities. And this reportedly included kidnapping and arson. And the indictment claims that this intimidation of victims and witnesses not only continued but intensified after Diddy came under public scrutiny back in November 2023 when Cassie filed her lawsuit. The document claims that Diddy tried to use bribery to pressure witnesses and victims to stay silent and not report what they experienced or knew to law enforcement. Diddy would often call his victims and witnesses on the phone and provide them with a false narrative of events in an effort to conceal his crimes. But the indictment claims that Diddy caused these calls to be recorded on at least two occasions. The indictment then goes on to describe how Diddy and his employees violated the hearing laws of the United States by engaging in activities that affected interstate and foreign commerce and knowingly combined, conspired, confederated, and agreed together and with each other to violate these laws. And y'all, all this was just count one. Count two of the indictment refers to ex-trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion. And it claims that from at least in or about 2009 up to in or about 2018, Diddy knowingly recruited, enticed, harbored, transported, provided, obtained, advertised, maintained, patronized, and solicited by any means a person knowing and in reckless disregard of the fact that means of force, threats of force, fraud, and coercion, and any combination of such means would be used to cause the person to engage in commercial ex -act. And finally, the third felony count of the indictment refers to transportation to engage in prostitution.
question, describing how between 2009 all the way up to 2024, Diddy knowingly transported women victims and commercial ex-workers with the intent they engage in prostitution. Now, as for Diddy's reaction to the arrest and the charges, his attorney, Mark Agnafilio, said Diddy expected to enter a plea of not guilty. Agnafilio also added, he's going to fight this with all of his energy and all of his might and the full confidence of his lawyers. Okay, good luck with that. We all remember how when Cassie dropped her lawsuit in November 2023, Diddy immediately called her a liar and his lawyers accused her of looking for a quick payday. But when that hotel video footage dropped in May, Diddy shared that video on Instagram admitting his behavior was inexcusable and claiming he was going through a dark time when that attack occurred. But Diddy never used the word sorry once in the video or even mentioned Cassie by name. And he later deleted the whole thing from his IG page. So yeah, to sum it all up, Diddy is cooked y'all. But according to some reports, Diddy is now to snitch on some of his famous buddies. And names that are being thrown in the mix are Jay-Z, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Will Smith. Well, let me know your thoughts on Diddy's arrest and the charges he's facing. How do you think the trial will play out? And do you think this will snowball further to involve some of Diddy's celebrity friends? Drop your comments below and don't miss out on this next video.